Hello everybody! Today I am going to be doing a book and art haul. Never been done before, perhaps. I'm also going to be showing you a bunch of frames that I bought. Uh, I realize that this is a pretty niche <laughs> video where I show you books that I got, art that I bought, and frames that I bought, but I figured there might be one person out there who might find this interesting. Uh, I really wanted to share it all with you and I thought a book haul, it can be its own video, but a frame haul definitely can't be. So I'm jamming it all into one. Over the weekend, my boyfriend and I went to the big city. <laughs> we went to Halifax and I took it as an opportunity to purchase far too many books. Um, but I also took it as an opportunity to visit a really big value village where I was able to buy a bunch of frames because a couple weeks prior I went crazy buying art online. I have not been sleeping. I don't really sleep anymore. And so I, sh I shouldn't admit this, but I just do a lot of online shopping at night. I have basically become the character in my year of rest and relaxation who like wakes up and suddenly she bought things she didn't really remember buying. <laughs> <laughs> the art that I bought was an absolute delight. And so let's start there um, because how do you haul art? Let's start with the biggest one first. Wow. Okay. I'm, this is exciting. This is um, a Monet. Can you even hear me? This is one of my favorite Monets and I just loved the color so much. It was a print I really wanted to have and I wanted it to be giant. Is it too giant? Perhaps. I found out that there is a bunch of people online <laughs> on Etsy that print <laughs> famous paintings in very high quality. And that's what, that's what I did. I went crazy. Obviously don't buy secondhand paintings if the painter, the artist is still alive, like support artists. These people have all been dead for decades at least. And I'm just trying to save myself a few dollars, but it's time to go to the first frame. This is going to be controversial, I think. Some people are gonna hate it. Some people like me are gonna love it. Look at this. So this is a fake marble <laughs> green ultra 80s, 90s uh, frame. It's giant and I think, I actually haven't even tested, that it will fit the Monet. Is it a sin to put a Monet on a frame like this? Maybe. I think that works, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I think that that is a massive success. Um, I think I'm gonna do it, even though people are gonna yell at me about the atrocities here. So that frame cost me $25, $24.99 from Value Village. And I cannot emphasize enough do not buy frames full price from like Michael's, which was what I was gonna do. I was gonna just go to Michael's and buy a bunch of frames. That frame at Michael's would have cost me like a hundred dollars. Uh, frames can be super expensive. And if you if you know, you have like a real print and like a fine piece of art and you have a perfect frame, et cetera, et cetera, do it. I have definitely bought frames from Michael's before, but if you just want, if you need to buy a bunch of them, do it in bulk, go to Value Village or, wherever a thrift store near you is. Cause I got some frames for like five bucks, eight dollars, and I never would have gotten that from like brand new. The other giant one that I purchased, I mean painting. Oh my God. I'm so excited to have these in my home. This is one of my favorites. This was a painting that I saw. This is um, Edward Hopper. What's it called? New York movie? I'm pretty sure I saw this at MoMA and it was one of the ones where you just stand there and like stare at it for way too long. I was obsessed with it. And the fact that I get to have this in my house, I'm so excited about. The rest are smaller and I've kept them in between these two pieces of cardboard because I actually bought one from DFTBA. I'll show you that one next. It is so beautiful and it came packaged like this and it's been great for storing the other paintings that I bought. So that's not it. Oh. My God, look at this, look at it. This is a painting, um, oh God, I forgot the exact name of the artist, but I will link them down below. Absolutely beautiful scene of Tokyo at night. It's called Tokyo at night number seven. I, this is so beautiful. This is so beautiful, wow. Then we have this abstract piece. 
It's the only abstract one I got, but and I've never heard of it. I just loved it when I saw it online. I think it's upside down. I think it goes like that. <laughs> I then bought this. Oh, these are this color is so vibrant. I think this is going to look so beautiful in a little frame. And then I have a couple more hoppers. This one, which one? What is this called? Seven a.m. Made me so happy. And then, okay, the next two are really cool. This is another Edward Hopper. I think it's called Rooms by the Sea. I'm gonna link the, I'm gonna put the name of everything down below. But this guy is so beautiful. I, I was obsessed with it. I was like, okay, I for sure have to buy it. I was looking at Google images of it when I saw this painting by Philip Koch, which is a little dusty right now. But my boyfriend got this for me because I couldn't find where to buy it online. I will put the link below. But these were paintings he did inspired by Edward Hopper. And so I absolutely want to hang these together. I think that that will be so amazing. All right, there is other paintings that, that aren't here. Where are they? Apparently I haven't even opened this one yet. Ooh, he came tightly wrapped. I don't wanna hurt it. Okay, up first we have woman ironing, which is astonishing. Ast oh wow, the sun really came out to show you woman ironing. This is from Pablo Picasso's Blue Period, which makes me sound pretentious, but that's just the truth. <laughs> Picasso is so famous for his abstract stuff, which is cool, but I'm not really a huge fan of it. His earlier stuff though, <laughs> now I sound like a hipster. Early Picasso is where it's at. Um, and then this one, I also, I have never seen like at a museum or anything. I just saw it on this guy's Etsy and I was like, this is so beautiful. I think it's just called marriage. And I just thought it was so interesting. These two, this, this old couple sleeping and like outside the window is spooky. I thought it was awesome. So that's all the art I got, which is so much, it's so much art. Um, I am so excited though. I have never had a house to fill with art before. And it just feels so exciting that I'm going to be able to cover this house with all of the walls with pieces of art that I love. So let me quickly show you some frames because this, this big boy here was pretty special. I then just have like two big wooden ones. And then I have a bunch of smaller ones. I have this awesome, this one was $4.99. It's got like a gold edge on it. Another wooden one. These are exciting because it's funny because I didn't even look at the art when I was looking at these. These are pretty, these are cute, but I bought these because they're matching frames and I want to put the two Edward Hopper ones in here together. This one's cool because it's like a pink, a pink backing with a pinkish frame. And then another, it's cool, like this is a cool lighthouse, very Nova Scotia, actually goes with that one. You can't see that, can you? Look, we've got two lighthouses here. That's kind of cool. <gasps> Should I just hang that there? Because they're both square frames, almost the exact same size, and they're both of lighthouses, and they're kind of like mirroring each other. <gasps> okay, leave your opinions down below. Should I just put this here? and enjoy it for what it is, as opposed to putting one of my art pieces in it. Wow, scandalous. That is all of the art and all of the frames that I purchased. <laughs> uh, I hope you found that interesting. You must have if you watched it for that long. Uh, and now we're gonna do the book haul and I'm gonna try and get through these relatively quickly because I've clearly purchased far too many. Oh boy, okay. So up first we have Switch by A.S. King. I have been a massive A.S. King fan on this channel for about 10 years now. So every single time she comes out with a book, I am absolutely thrilled and excited. She's my favorite YA author. I think she's phenomenal. This one sounds fantastic. At this point, I honestly don't even care though. I don't even care what the book is about. If it's by A.S. King, I'm gonna read it, but I love the cover. I got the Fran Leibovitz Reader because, uh, so this is a collection of her two most popular books, it says. So she had two books, one called Metropolitan Life and the other is called Social Studies. And this put, this is both of those together. And I watched the, um, the new show. How do I already forget what it was called? But the new show that was on Netflix with Fran Leibovitz. And I thought it was such an excellent, fun and interesting show. And I would absolutely like to read some of her writing. When I picked this up from the post office, I just sat in my car and ended up accidentally reading the last essay. And it was hysterical and so interesting. So. Excited to have that boy. 
Okay, this is interesting because I have not purchased middle grade in years. So long. I just don't really gravitate towards it. I kind of, you know, I feel I enjoyed middle grade when I was in middle grades, but I just don't really read it as an adult. But this one caught my eye. Is it too bright? Will that diffuse? It diffused. This caught my eye because it's about a girl who lives in a school bus with her dad, Captain Fantastic style. Captain Fantastic is one of my all time favorite movies. I'm completely obsessed with that movie. And I was literally looking up books like Captain Fantastic and I must have kept searching alternative things on Google, like book about someone living in a tiny house, book about people living sustainably, book about people living alternatively, book about living in a school bus. Like I probably did that and then I found this book because I haven't heard anyone talk about it, but it sounds fantastic. It says that this girl and her dad have lived in the school bus for five years since her mother passed away. And the main character is trying to trick her dad to drive back to their old neighborhood park where she buried a treasure box with her mom. So I think that this sounds really cool. I'm excited to try middle grade because I haven't read one in a very long time. Next up is Memorial by Brian Washington, a book I have heard only fantastic things about. Um, I decided to go with the UK cover first because I think I just like it a bit more than the US cover, but also because it's in paperback. Um, this is so beautiful. It sounds fantastic about a youngish couple, you know, in their 20s who have been together for a very long time and the relationship is good, but it's sort of lost its spark. It doesn't feel like magic anymore. It just feels like they're just in it because they're in it. And then one of the guys' mother comes to where they live and tells her son that her father is dying or has died, um, is dying in Osaka in Japan. And so he flies back to Japan to hang out with his dying father. But for some reason, I don't know because I haven't read the book, the mom stays in his apartment with his boyfriend. And so it's kind of seems like it's going to be a bunch of really interesting relationships that form. It's people have said it's, it's fantastic. It sounds great. I'm in. I'm in. Oh, The Mothers by Britt Bennett. So this is exciting because I read The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett last year. Absolutely loved it. It was such a phenomenally strong, solid read. I can't really imagine anyone reading that book and not at least liking it, if not loving it. And I had heard so much good stuff about The Mothers a couple years prior when this book came out. So there's no reason I won't love this. Okay, I then have A Luminous Republic by Andres Barba. So I, th I think he's Spanish, as in from Spain. This book I've never heard of. I was caught by the spine, actually, in chapters, and I saw the cover and I thought, this is very cool. On the front and in the back, it's described as Lord of the Flies seen from the other side. And I was like, what does that even mean? And it's about these 32 kids who are like jungle kids and nobody knows where they came from coming to the city and inspiring all the other kids to like join them and start sort of a revolution. I can't fully tell. It says facing complete collapse, municipal forces embark on a hunt to find the kids before the city falls into irreparable chaos. And I thought that sounds phenomenal. So it sounds like a dystopian a uh, near future, weird Lord of the Flies kind of a thing. Who am I to say no to that? The last novel that I bought is Recipe for a Perfect Wife by Karma Brown, who is a Canadian author. And this was highly praised by Taylor Jenkins Reid, who everyone on booktube seems to love. The thing that really sucked me in, it says that Alice Hale's life is falling apart, or at least that's what it feels like to Alice, cooped up in the newly purchased suburban fixer upper. She reluctantly agreed to rehab with her husband. Um, so, you know, it seems like it's about these two different women who are having um, existential crises, but one of them is fixing up a house. And that, that spoke to me. <laughs> the next book I got is A Thousand Mornings by Mary Oliver, my favorite poet. Uh, I saw it, I wanted it, I grabbed it. What can I say? It's gonna be a poetry collection by Mary Oliver. It's gonna be great. Um, and then I got a million graphic novels. <laughs> Perhaps too many, some would say. Uh, I wanted to show you this great bag. 
that I was given, well, wrong side, Strange Adventures, Comics and Curiosities, the widest and wisest selection in Atlantic Canada. So I went to this great bookshop, Strange Adventures, in Halifax, and they really did have an incredible collection. It was a super fun store, really friendly staff. Um, and so I recommend if you're in and around Halifax, go to that bookshop. But I bought so many, so many graphic novels. Uh, I got Hobo Mom by Charles Forsman and Max de Ravigay, whose book Bastard was the first book I read last year and I loved. So when I saw another one by him, I was like, I have to have it. I don't even really care what it's about. Um, I really enjoyed it. I already read it. It didn't take very long, but I really enjoyed it. It was a bit short. It was pretty short. It's like 68 pages. And I really wish it had been a lot longer because I felt like I was just falling into this world and getting to know these characters when it ended a little abruptly, which can often happen in graphic novels, I found, but I still really enjoyed it. I'm glad to add it to my collection. I got the first one I got is this Anne of Green Gables uh, manga adaptation. I mainly just got it because I love Anne of Green Gables and I wanted to add it to my, my book collection. I will definitely read it and I will see, maybe I'm gonna completely adore it. Last year I read an adaptation, a graphic novel adaptation of Anne of Green Gables by Brenna Thumler, which is one of my all time favorite books now. It's such a beautiful adaptation. Um, so yes, I always find it so sad that manga isn't co in color. I really wish that it was, but this looks so fun. I mean, this looks incredible, like high drama, which Anne is high drama. As a, as a person. So this is gonna be great. I then got Rust Belt by Sean Knickerbocker, who um, I've never heard of, but this collection seemed really cool. I actually didn't realize it was an anthology, a collection of his graphic stories until I read it. And again, I really liked it, but it felt like all the stories were too short, which I've, I said is a thing with graphic novels sometimes. They're like short stories often and you just like, you get to know everyone, you get to know the world and then it ends. And I'm like, no. So uh, if anything, it introduced me to this artist who I'm like now following on Instagram and I'm excited to see more from. Um, I enjoy this collection, but yeah, I really wish it had been longer. Okay, we have three more graphic novels. Uh, I got Ye by Guillaume Petreca. Never heard of it, never heard of the author but uh, and illustrator, but this is just so beautiful. I picked it up in the shop and the second I flipped through it, I was like, I just am so obsessed with this beautiful art. But it's about a guy, Yi, who is named after the only sound that he can make. Um, and it says that his voice was stolen by the colorless king, the source of all the world's sorrows. So he goes on this adventure, I think to try and get his voice back, uh, Ariel the Little Mermaid style. And uh, it's like a pirate adventure. Sounds phenomenal. Then we have Fun Home by Alison Bechdel, such a staple in the graphic novel world. And I just haven't, how have I not read it yet? How did I not own it? So I'm very excited to have this. It's a graphic memoir. So it's her actual life. And Alison Bechdel is more famously known for creating the Bechdel test. I think that's probably the like most popular thing that she has done. But this is such a, this is such a classic. I'm very excited to read what that's about. And then finally, An Embarrassment of Witches by Sophie Goldstein and I think Jenna Jordan. It's hard to read the font there. Jen, it's just Jen Jordan. <laughs> this looks so fun. Look at this color scheme. I was obsessed with this color scheme. <gasps> I've never seen these colors used in a graphic novel before. And I think that this is just gonna be like sitting down to watch a fun movie. I can't wait to read it. It looks silly and a little dorky, but in like the best way. Before we go, we must thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Hear me out. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They offer thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics, including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. It's curated especially for learning, which means that there's no ads, they're always creating new, original, high quality content, and it all costs less than $10 a month with their annual premium membership. Because I talked about all of the paintings that I bought today, I thought it was so perfect to talk about this really beautifully done basics of watercoloring course, which I want to do this summer. All I want to do is go outside and paint. <laughs> the 
first thousand of my subscribers to click the link down in my description will get a free trial of premium membership. So click the link down below, check it out. There's so much to learn. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And thank you to all for hanging out with me. Uh, let me know which of these books I need to read first in the description. Which of my paintings you're most excited about? Which frame got you the most hyped? <laughs> and I will talk to you guys all in my next video. Bye.